Hi everybody, this video is about my testimony, um, about me asking the Lord if I could have a cat, a little kitten, or if I could have a little puppy, and the Lord told me no. So I have been asking him for about two years, and he kept telling me no, and I would see other people. And people that are people of God, and they had their own pets and stuff, and but he just kept telling me no. So, you know, <laughs> no means no. So, I had accepted that, but um, November the first, well, it was like in October. I started feeling like. Actually, it was before October, probably like around August. I started feeling like a longing for a pet. Like I just wanted, you know, I, I just love animals and I just wanted like a pet, you know, but I wanted the pet to be like a puppy or a kitten. I didn't want, you know, yeah, but anyway, so the Lord kept telling me no, but anyway, so I started getting a strong longing for it. And it was probably around August, September, and then November the 1st, I finally went to the Humane Society here where I live, the local Humane Society. And I decided to foster a cat, a kitten. It was a little kitten named Honey. Um, she was totally awesome, but... My testimony is, is that when the Lord says no, he means no. So, uh, unfortunately, I got honey on November the 1st. And I thought, you know, technically, she's not my cat. Technically, I'm just fostering her. And technically, I was. But <laughs> the Lord said no. <laughs> so, anyway, so I got her November the first and let me tell y'all by november the 10th honey was dead honey died i was sad and um yeah i had to watch honey first when she came i mean she was just this ball of energy she was so happy to be in a home and stuff and she just was all over the place like Anytime I move, she'll get up and like be escort me wherever I'm going. If I go to the bathroom, she gonna follow me, whatever. So sometime I would look for her, and when I look for her, she been in the living room on the couch, just sitting there chilling. So I was like, okay, so she figured it out. So that's on spot. Okay, so I'm not even mad. So I was like, she, I guess she gonna live here too. So yeah, she can be on the couch. So, yeah, so she would be on the sofa sometimes just sitting there, and that was her spot. Even though she had um her own little beds, she just preferred to be on the couch. And if she wasn't on the couch, she wanted to be in my bed with me. But anyway, so, yeah, so she liked this being on the sofa. Or if she wasn't on the sofa, like I said, she would like um being in my bed. She loved to play with the little feather thing that you that they chase after the feather she didn't too much chase after the light the uh beam light beam she didn't too much chase after that but she had some other little toys she liked playing with toys um she didn't have no problem going to the um little box and stuff like that so and she was just great awesome and stuff and it was a few times I had to take her places with me um, because she was new and I didn't want to leave her at home in the little um, carrier the whole time that I was gone sometimes. Sometimes I would have longer days and sometimes I would have shorter days, so I would take her with me. But anyway, plus I was getting to know her. But you guys, let me tell you, so Honey started getting sick. I could tell she was getting sick because... First, she started getting clingy. Then she started, like, getting laying around. Then she started, like, sneezing and wanting to um, 
like her eyes start being drowsy or whatever. So I called the, oh, and she started having the runs. So I called the Humane Society because they have a um a 24-hour number for vets. So I called them and let them know, and I described everything to them, and they asked me, you know, all these questions and stuff. So they was like, oh, well, since she don't have blood in her feces or anything, then it sound like you might can just, you know, it. she's just adjusting and she'll be fine. Well, okay, y'all. So that was on a Thursday when I had called them, y'all. So by the time the weekend was over, which I, I called them on the weekend. Matter of fact, I think it was a Saturday. I called them and told them it looked like she went. Maybe it was a Sunday. I called them and told them it looked like she wasn't getting any better. So when Monday came, I took her to, I took her over there. And y'all, they said she wasn't going to make it. They said they looked at her. They found out that she had a sickness called palvo, palvo. I don't know if I'm saying it right. But they said it's kind of common in dogs and cats. They can have it and not even know that, you know, they have it. And if they are around other animals that have it, they can give it to other animals. So, okay, so at the end of the day, if I hadn't had honey, she could have exposed other animals to it. So it's kind of good that I did have honey and she was isolated from the other animals. So they possibly didn't get it. But unfortunately, she passed away. She was mad. She did not want to die. I mean, yeah, she didn't want to die. And she knew she was dying. And she did not want to leave this house because she had already claimed. You know how they, uh, <laughs> she had already claimed this is her home. <laughs> and she loved um, kneading on stuff. I, I, I say, you can make some more bread. So anyway, she loved doing all that. But anyway, yeah, she didn't want to leave this house, y'all. She got under my baker's rack in the kitchen behind my wine uh, rack and wedged herself behind there. I couldn't get down there and get her out. I had to call my neighbor and I seen him outside and he came over and got her from under there and put her in the carrier for me so I could take her to her appointment. But unfortunately, yeah, so she didn't make it. So they gave me some kind of kit to come home and clean up everything because that palvo, palvo or whatever, you got to clean up all the surfaces before you expose another animal to the surfaces. Supposedly, it's the palvo doesn't affect a, 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 a human. It just only affects the animal. But honey, listen, I cleaned up. And I didn't feel better. Matter of fact, I was sad. Like I was grieving for real over this little kit, this little kitten, because she had she had grown on me just just that fast. And um it's crazy. But anyway, um I cleaned up the areas and stuff. And it wasn't until after I finally got the energy to clean up the areas. Then I finally started feeling better. But you guys, I could feel her presence, like her spirit. I could feel her presence still in the house, like the first day or two after. Yeah, it was crazy. Like, but anyway, um, I pray and, and I think the Lord was giving me grace because he knew I was grieving. He gave me grace and he gave me rest. I will say that. But at the same time, when I prayed to him and asked them, ask him, you know, was it because of the warfare that I was going through? Did the witches kill the cat? And he didn't say that. He didn't say that they did or they didn't. But what he said was he allowed it. He said he allowed it. I was like, you allowed it. He was like, yeah, he allowed it. So then when I got in a secret place, I had, it came, finally came to my remembrance that, oh, so basically now I remember you didn't never authorize me to get that cat. You told me 
for two years that I could not have a pet, period. No. You told me that. So after two and a half years, I took it upon myself to foster a cat, which she technically was not my cat. I was just fostering her. But yeah, the Lord said he allowed it. So I just want to let <laughs> y'all know that's my testimony. It, it has some highs and lows in the entire testimony, but I just want to let you know that if the Lord tells us something, he's doing it for a reason, although we may not understand what the reason is. And after Honey died, let me see. This was November the 1st. I got her. By the 10th, they had euthanized her. Today is the 27th. I'm starting to finally, I think last week it was that I started getting more revelation knowledge about why the Lord kept telling me he did not want me to have a pet. Okay. And I had been so broken. I had gone through so much warfare and so much trauma in my past. Um, even as a child, I mean, up to now, and the Lord was really trying to focus me during this time of isolation. Um, he wanted me to focus on him and I, of course, and he also wanted me to focus on myself. I'm a person that loves to love and yeah, I'm a nurturer. I'm just a natural nurturer. Yeah, I love children. I love animals. And I love helping other people when when it's possible. But, you know, and I'm not a killer, but don't push me. Don't think you're just going to walk all over me. Yes, I, I have learned stronger boundaries, even though I knew them before. But I also, that's a lot. That's a whole, I'm not going to get into the narcissism, narcissism, but yeah, I grew up around a lot of, and, and plus, I mean, yeah, I just been through a lot. I put it like that. So the Lord wanted to heal me in this time of isolation. And he wanted me to have this time to myself, for myself and for him and I. And I'm just telling somebody that when the Lord, <laughs> when the Lord tells you no, or he tells you something, although you may not understand why he's telling you this or he's telling you that, and you still want to <laughs> do things your way, I'm just urging you not to do it your own way. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just wait on the Lord and continue to do good. And when it's time for you, when it's time, because it's a time for everything. So when it's time for you to then be released into what you had asked him for, or for you to receive what you had asked him for, then it's time for that. But when it's not time for that, it's not time for that. So obedience really is better than sacrifice and it really is best to obey the Lord. So that's my testimony about my cat. Yeah, my cat died and yeah. And to be honest, I still miss her and it's unfortunate what happened in some ways I questioned, could I have done anything different? And I guess the best thing I could have done was never, went to go get her. But then again, I'm sort of glad that I did go get her because by her being here instead of there, she was here and the other animals didn't get sick because she was here. So it all worked out, but obedience, be obedient and wait for the Lord in his timing. Okay. All right. So that's my testimony about my cat named Honey. I miss her. If I could upload a picture or something, I really would. But yeah, I still have pictures in my phone. She's so cute, sweet, and adorable. And yeah, I miss her bunches. And I think that when it's time for me to finally get my own pet, I'll try it again. But right now, I got to wait. <laughs> the Lord said no. <laughs> 
Be blessed.